Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, we're just waiting for more participants, so we'll uh, start in a few minutes. Hi everyone, uh, we're going to give about one more minute to let everyone join and then we're going to start. Hello everyone, I'm your host Robin Crotty and I would like to welcome you to the latest installment of Copy Talk with ReadyTalk. Today's 30 minute webinar is designed to provide a deeper dive into the replay product, answering, answering questions around what it is, what problems it solves, and who it benefits. Before we get started, I'd like to go through some housekeeping items. We will follow up with the link to the recording of today's session after the event. Questions will be addressed in real time through the chat window, so please submit any and all questions into chat throughout the event. We encourage you to join the social conversation, so please use hashtag RTCoffeeTalk on Twitter or use the at ReadyTalk handle. As a reminder, all attendees will receive a $5 coffee gift card delivered via email after the webinar. Today's agenda will include a speaker Q&A covering what is replay, why replay, the benefits to the marketer, and the future of webinars, as well as a replay product overview demo. Today, our coffee talkers include Sam Morgan, Senior Product Manager at ReadyTalk. Sam geeks out on understanding how ReadyTalk can help marketers share their best ideas with their audience and take the stress out of webinars. She also works with our customers and partners to build integrations with the ReadyTalk platform, including Salesforce.com, Marketo, Eloqua, and more. We also have Drew Fry, Demand Gen Manager at ReadyTalk. Drew is focused on putting marketers first and making it easier for them to connect their message with their audience. He also manages ReadyTalk's customer marketing programs, including the advocacy group, The Summit Club. In his off hours, you can find Drew watching EPL and walking his docks in Boris. Welcome, Sam and Drew. Thanks, Robin. It's great to be here. Yeah, great to be here. All right, let's dive right into the Q&A session. To start us off, do you think webinars are still relevant? I'll answer that first, Robin. Webinars are definitely still relevant. People in marketing roles today are measuring success through the number of quality leads they generate, the conversion rates, and the number of sales won from the leads that they are generating. In the research done this year, Content Marketing Institute, an entrepreneur, found that 20 to 40 percent of people who attend webinars become quality leads. And when I talk to people in marketing, they tell me that webinars continue to be an important part of their content marketing strategy, in large part due to the conversion rates. This also matches what we're seeing in the industry, you know, the same sources, found that over 60% of organizations are using webinars for B2B content marketing. Yeah, I think, you know, thinking about webinars, webinars are definitely a part of our MarTech stack. Uh, they're definitely a tried and true lead gen tool. And if you think about it, nearly everyone who attends your webinar has at least shown some sort of interest in what it is that you're talking about. 
So by, by being able to display your level of expertise and insight, you're able to connect with your audience on a deeper level, at least way more so than email, that's for sure. All right, considering the state of webinars, what is Replay and how does it fit into a webinar strategy? So Replay is a new product on the ReadyTalk Illuminate platform. It allows people to stream recordings to a live audience without requiring support from anyone else. The person hosting the event and those speaking can choose to attend, or they can have the recording playback automatically at the specified date and time. It provides the ability for the audience to chat with each other and or the person hosting the event and the people speaking if the host and the speakers choose to attend. The way it relates to webinars is people in marketing have a limited time window to make a positive impression on others. They want to present the best version of themselves and their content. They also want to focus more on interacting with people attending the event rather than focusing on the logistics of the event. They want to connect with the largest number of people possible so they can generate those quality leads and help with sales. And finally, they often have to do all of this with a limited team size, limited time, and a limited budget. So Replay is meant to help with all of those challenges and needs. Drew, are you seeing any of that yourself in your role? Yeah, I mean, I think how this is going to change our webinar strategy moving forward uh, is that I'm now able to really dial in on the content and focus on what matters, right? So. I can spend more time researching, more time gathering stats, and really obsessing over the material and not really focusing on the logistics at all. Uh, in fact, it actually takes a lot of stress out of the webinar experience, period. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not staying up late at night, uh, anxious the night before uh, a late or a webinar the next day. Uh, I'm, in fact, well asleep enjoying my night's rest, and looking forward to this webinar. Uh, and you know what, the fact that I'm able to be so less stressed out uh, over the webinar itself is, uh, is great. And I think my wife actually would uh, thank you for that. Um, I bet she does. Yeah. But since we can literally replay uh, this any time that we want, I'm able to hit difficult to reach time zones like Australia and Japan, for instance. So again, I don't have to wake up at a weird hour in the middle of the night. Instead, I can just relax, check in on the webinar, on my own schedule, on my own time. Uh, and again, it just takes a lot of stress out of the entire webinar experience. So I think that's how it's going to change uh, our webinar strategy moving forward. We're, we're going to definitely do more and more webinars. And, and as you say that, that you know, just warms my heart because you know, those are the exact problems that we're trying to to help with to help solve with replay. Um, you know, really maximizing the time and money that you know people have already spent on content creation, extending how and when they can reach people, saving money on that pre and during and post event um, process, also helping with that with the cost reduction, that cost per lead. And it's that showcasing the best you, the best work that you have, and taking the stress out of hosting the event. Um, and part of that being reaching people in different time zones without having to wake up or get in trouble with your significant <laughs> other. <laughs> and, and really, it's, the purpose is to try and let marketers like yourself focus on the most important lead generation or goal achievement activities rather than having to worry about a lot of logistical um, aspects of the problem of webinars themselves. Mm -hmm. So speaking to those problems it solves for the marketer, why did you decide to develop this product? Yeah. You know, our overall goal in general is to create products and solutions that help organization and people create connections, you know, connections to each other, connections to content, connections to a brand, uh, to a cause, to an organization. So that's really our, our overarching goal in, from product development perspective. But the concept of you know, reusing content or pre-recording content and sharing it came after hearing stories like the ones that Drew said or, or other stories that, that people in marketing have shared um, you know, where they say that webinars are great, they have a lot of benefits, but, 
And then they proceed to list off all of the challenges around you know, how much time and energy they require for planning, coordination, content preparation, all the practice, you know, the level of stress they bring, and just the risks that come with doing it live. You, things happen and you just can't plan for those things. And then with the fact that how marketing programs are being measured today, there's a lot of pressure around hitting that attendee target. And if you're bringing in speakers, it can be really, really expensive. And then the final one, and I, I think it's still a challenge very much today, is you know, they, they tell me, I'm not sure I picked the right content or the right topic. So there's a lot of stress around, you know, did I even bring the right content to the table for delivery? Um, so to address those challenges, we originally developed a solution that we pri provided as a managed services option. And, and marketers said, oh, that's, that's really great. But what they said was they really wanted something that they could do themselves on their time. So that's how Replay came to be, is to f fulfill that self-service need and still address the challenges that you know, we were looking to address to start. So why would you go for replayed versus providing an on-demand webinar? Yeah, the, the biggest difference really between on-demand and a live webinar is that more people actually will attend the live webinar. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, people have the best intentions. They'll say, oh, I'll, I'll listen to that uh, on-demand webinar whenever I get around to it. Uh, I'll try to carve out some time later in the day. But in reality, uh, we all live busy lives, and it's really hard to find that extra time at the end of the day. Um, and if you look at it from the other point of view, the, the live webinar, you're, you're mentally prepared for this. You've signed up for it weeks in advance. Uh, even as simple as there's a calendar invite that, you, that it will go off letting you know that you're about to attend this webinar. I mean, you have prepared for this, and the uh, live webinars just perform so much better. Um, so as a marketer, you know, I want to have that live webinar experience as often as I can. And with Replay, I'm able to do that. I'm able to have kind of the best of both worlds. I'm able to record it earlier, make sure it sounds perfect, or at least how I want it to sound, and then I can then send that out as if it was live. Uh, so it's great. How is this different than what's already in the market? So for us, Replay is built specifically for people like Drew, or people, people in marketing. Um, we understand that content gets generated through a lot of different sources. So we are thinking of how can we provide the ability for people to upload an MP4, create it anywhere, and be able to play it back on this platform. So whether they're using a ReadyTalk platform or something else, they would still have the ability to play it back. And, and also we're really putting heavy focus on that human interaction aspect of it. The experience is meant to be friendly and, and help people create an emotional connection. Um, so often we use a solution that we have to. We want to create a solution that people want to. This has been a really interesting conversation so far, but I think what people really want to know is where do you see the future of webinars going? Um, so I'll take a first stab at that. Uh, so as Drew mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, there is an ever-increasing premium on people's time. For people to spend some of it attending webinars, the webinars must be interesting um, and engage, have engaging content, and it needs more multimedia delivery. Um, people also want content to be, to be delivered where they are. You know, in the applications they use, they don't want to always have to go to you know, where you tell them to go. If you can just be um, in the application they use, then that's, that's more convenient for them and creates a li greater likelihood that they're going to attend and spend some of their time watching your webinars. Um, so webinars need to and, and, and are evolving to meet these needs and expectations. So people in marketing are telling me that they are being asked to do more fireside chats, more interviews, and, and or TED-talk-like -like events um, instead of 
a more slide-focused webinar. Um, they're moving towards webinar being less scripted and more informal, and they're having to find more delivery channels uh, to be where their audience is rather than, than that forcing them to be on their platform or the platform that they've chosen. And data and analytics are becoming really crucial because they help the host and the content creators understand what is working and what isn't working and when people are engaging and, and when they're not. And you know, so these are all just you know, interesting challenges that we're yeah, I think the only thing that I would want to add to that is just the importance of the analytic piece. So stats and analytics are so important with everything that marketers do, um, maybe more so now than ever before. So if we're able to tie stats and analytics to a content campaign, to webinars, uh, we look better to uh, our bosses and our bosses' bosses. If we're able to say that this piece of content and this webinar worked, because of X, Y, and Z, and it didn't work because of X, Y, and Z, even better. Um, doing more with less. I feel like everybody is feeling the pinch, uh, so to speak, with being able to, uh, having to spend uh, less amount of money, but still being in charge of producing even more results. And so that ability to uh, replay and reuse a lot of these webinars, these pieces of content that might have taken you a really long time to promote, to uh, create, um, if you're able to reuse those again and again and again, then uh, you are able to do way more with less and you as the marketer will be able to um, look really good. <laughs> and so, and so that's, that's it. I mean, the analytic piece, uh, doing more with less, those two things uh, are paramount with uh, where webinars and marketing are going. How do you see ReadyTalk moving forward in this space? You know, as I, I mentioned before, with all the challenges and kind of just the general trends, that's that's really where we're we're focusing on is how do we support being where the audience is? How do we support um, making being an easy to use, person friendly application that al allows people to have more of an informal type conversation? Um, and, and how do we help people be smarter about the content that they're creating? So being able to take pieces from, hey, this part of the content worked here and it aligns with this other piece of content and now I'm going to put those together. And, and to that reuse perspective, really looking towards supporting that need and that desire, um, just constantly more ways to provide insights into what's happening before the event, during the event, after the event, and, and helping make those marketers you know, look good to be those, those superstar people. So that's really where we're looking to, to take you know, ReadyTalk Illuminate and all the solutions we have in, in the ReadyTalk suite to support the marketers. Great. Uh, thank you, Sam and Drew, for the interesting discussion. Now it's time to see Replay in Action. Thanks, Robin. So we start off on the login page. To log in, you would enter your email address and your password. You click the Sign In option. Your credentials are authenticated, and you're brought to the home page. You'll see this view. And basically, it shows that there are no events currently scheduled and no events running, and it gives you a quick option to schedule a new event. You also have the option to schedule an event here at the top bar, and that bar is available from all pages. To schedule an event, it's a quick five-step process. You enter your event title. You choose your recording. Currently, the only recordings that can be played through Replay are those created on the ReadyTalk service. However, that will be changing here in the near future. We will be allowing users to upload MP4s from their desktop. But for now, to load your recording, you would enter your ReadyTalk credentials, your toll-free, your access code, and your passcode. That pulls all the recordings that you have on the ReadyTalk service 
they are sorted in date order with the newest at the top. You select your recording. You select the date you would like to run your event. Ooh, enter the time. Click here to toggle between AM and PM. All events are set to automatically start on the scheduled date and time. However, if you choose to manually start your event, to do that you would click the I want to start my event manually option and then click the schedule event button. Once the event is scheduled, you're taken to the events detail page. Here you'll find your join URL. It is a universal URL link. You copy this link and you can use that to promote your event. So if you're using a marketing automation solution, you would enter this URL into your confirmation and reminder emails. If you're reaching a broader audience, you can post it on your social channels and other, other promotional channels that you use. From here you can also edit your event. So you can change any part of it from the title, the date, the time, and the recording. And you can make those edits up to two minutes before the event is scheduled to start. To preview the event, or if you've chosen to manually start the event, to get to the live view, you would click the preview event option. And this will play back the recording. As you can see up here, it shows that you're in the preview view. For manually started events, you have the start event option. If this event were an auto start event, that start event option would not be there. So now that I have an event scheduled, my home page has two sections, a next events section and a future events section. The events in the next events section are those that are scheduled to occur within the next 30 days. And each of those has a countdown to how many days, hours, or minutes until that event is scheduled to start. The future events section shows all events that are scheduled to occur in the future. So if I chose to manually start my event, I can click on the event and then choose Preview Event. Once again, because I chose to manually start this one, I have the Start Event option. So now I'll show you what it looks like from both the host and the attendee perspective. So I copied the join URL, so I'm going to paste it here. Attendees are asked to enter their name, email address, and company. If the event hasn't started, the attendee is brought to the lobby page. And the lobby shows what date the, and time the event is scheduled to start, the name of the event, and if they've joined too early, a link that they can use to come back at a later time. So once the host starts the event, we'll move the attendee from the lobby to the live event and open the chat window. The same thing occurs for the host, and as you can see, the event preview label is gone, indicating that we are now live. From here, chat can be viewed and entered. And this is group chat, so all attendees as well as the host will see all chats entered. And you can see here that the rebroadcast has moved to the demo portion. If for some reason 
an attendee posts a questionable comment or a questionable question, the host has the option to hide that. So here in the host view, you can see I have the, this ellipses, which has the hide comment option. Once a chat is hidden, it's in a lighter shade of gray for the host. It's also in a lighter shade of gray for the attendee. But the attendee also sees a message indicating that, that, that their chat was hidden by the host. If it's, this is a manually started event, then the host will need to end the event by choosing the End Event option. Once the event has ended, both the host and the attendee are taken to the Thank You page. If this were an event that started automatically, it would also end automatically five minutes after the recording has ended. And we leave that period of time in case there are chats happening to prevent the event from ending abruptly. Once the event is ended, the host can go back to that event and download the chat report and the registration report. The chat report includes all chats that occurred during the event. It includes the timestamp, who sent the message, the message, whether or not the message was hidden. And there's also uh, the tags option that is not currently being used, but it will be in the future for labeling um, chats as questions and as being answered. The registration report includes the name, email, and company of the attendee, the time that he or she entered, the time that he or she exited, and the total duration they were in the event. And those will be downloaded in CSV format so they can be uploaded into um, your CRM or your marketing automation to do follow-up and post-event communication. That concludes today's demo of Replay. Robin, back to you. Great stuff, Sam. I want to thank everyone for attending. One thing you may or may not have noticed is that this webinar is a replay. We pre-recorded and edited the webinar to create a flawless experience and opening us up to be able to engage through live chat. What's better than seeing a replayed webinar on replay? If we miss anyone's questions, we will follow up with you shortly. Now you can go ahead and talk amongst yourselves.